Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. Now, the Bitcoin having facts are important. Past price data may shed light on what is to come. Now, that would be really great if we see, you know, like history has a tendency to repeat itself. We see similar patterns happening over and over again. And so if the current Bitcoin halvening that's going to happen in a few days mimics or patterns itself after the previous happenings, that could be good news. So let's look at what's in today's video. We're going to talk about these three topics. Bitcoin will paint a super bearish golden cross right after the halvening. And then we're going to look at Bitcoin Twitter is extremely bullish on halvening. So the golden cross is a part of numbers and facts, but Twitter is really part of emotion because Twitter's not ran on facts typically. Twitter tends to run on people's emotions and excitement. Um, and has a little bit less bearing on. Anyway, when, when Bitcoin Twitter says that Bitcoin is a good buy, sometimes that's not really factual, but more emotionally based. So we're going to take a look at that. And then the last thing we're going to look at is the Bitcoin halving facts. We're going to look at pri past price data to see if it can shed light for us on what's about to come with Bitcoin price. So we have a great video planned for you. You're going to love it. Stick around all the way to the end and be sure to enjoy the Bitcoin happening facts. I think you'll be really surprised at what you see and encouraged about the potential in the short term future or at least short term in the sense of the next 18, you know, 12 to 24 months, but real close to 18 months, somewhere in that ballpark. So should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas that will help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? It would really help us out if you smash that like button. It makes a really big difference with uh, the Google and the YouTube algorithms. So I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. Uh, when it comes to cryptocurrency and investing in cryptocurrency, always be aware of the risk. This disclaimer will help you be aware of the risk that you would be engaging in if you choose to purchase cryptocurrency. So take it seriously. It's not for the faint-hearted. That's for sure. Right now, the Bitcoin price is down by half a percent. In fact, when I started preparing for this video, it was up. Um, but it wasn't up significantly. It was right around the 9,300 and something range. And so it's kind of bouncing around a little bit this morning. As you can see, the rest of the cryptocurrency market is also red. Currently, the time is 6.17 a.m. Central Standard Time. And it is May the 7th, 2020. And so now you know when this actually happened as far as Bitcoin's price and everything. And you can see Bitcoin's dominance is now at 67.33%, uh, which means yesterday it was around the 66% price, you know, dominance range, which means that the rest of the cryptocurrency market overall uh, fell in price compared to Bitcoin increased more than it in price. And so uh, Bitcoin has gained in its dominance. Now, will Bitcoin paint a super bearish golden cross right after the halvening? Let's take a look at this. So Bitcoin could form a golden cross pattern in the third or fourth week of May. The bullish signal will surface immediately after cryptocurrencies mining and reward halvening. The converging indicators could result in a massive upside shift. The title refers to what happens when the asset's 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average actually cross each other. So traders typically see it as a bullish indicator that leads to an extended upside. But the fact that a golden cross is surfacing immediately after Bitcoin's having a reward has doubled the possibility of a price rally. Golden cross meets the halving. 
Bitcoin will undergo a pre-programmed supply cut on May 12, 2020, wherein its daily output will go down from 1,800 Bitcoin to 900 Bitcoin. In other words, on a daily basis, currently the miners receive a miner reward of about 1,800 Bitcoin per day. And after the halvening, miners will receive a total of about 900 Bitcoin per day for their mining efforts. And so it's getting cut right in half. I mean, just slice it, slice it and slice it good. It will be the cryptocurrency's third halvening, and because the last two events had followed massive price rallies, uh, speculators believe the next yield will yield the similar results. Bitcoin has historically bottomed 459 days prior to the halvening, uh, climbed leading into the halvening, and then exploded to the upside after the halvening, explained Dan Moorhead, CEO of Pantera Capital. The post-having rallies have averaged 466 days, so right around a year and a half from the halvening to the peak of that bull cycle. So usually about 18 months after the halvening, Bitcoin hits a new all-time high. That's been the normal trend on the previous halvenings. I I would tend to think that we're going to see something similar, and you can kind of see by this chart Trying to get it centered here real nice. There we go. That's a little bit better. All right. So the white line is when the halvening occurred. And you can see uh, the the numbers here. Before the halvening, it increased by 468%. And then after the halvening, it increased 9,000%. That was the first halvening. The second halvening, it increased by 241%. And after the halvening, it increased by 2,900%. And you can see that this happening is following somewhat of a slower, similar reaction. It's only at 168% instead of 241 or 468. But still, it is following a similar pattern from that low to the price just before the happening. And this could change if Bitcoin goes up even more, like if we see a sudden surge just before the happening we could exceed or meet this 200% mark here. Time will tell. We'll know in a matter of days. Uh, Mr. Moorhead noted that the Bitcoin price could peak at $115,212 per Bitcoin should its historical supply-demand relationship hold after the May 12th halvening. The prediction involuntarily garners support from upcoming the upcoming golden cross formation. The technical indicator holds an impressive track as a lagging bullish indicator. In other words, the price starts rising ahead of its creation and extends its upside momentum after forming it. So let's talk about that statement a little bit. Let's look at a chart. So this is the chart that's being drawn right now this moment. Um, and you can see here, the Bitcoin price from around December 26 and all the way to the price that it has right now, which is on May 7th, 2020. You can see the date at the bottom of the chart there. As I move back and forth, it, it automatically adjusts to the date based off of where my mouse is. So anyway, this orange line here shows you the 200-day moving average. The blue line shows you the 50-day moving average. The 50-day moving average, because it only records the last 50 days of price and then makes a, uh, comes up with the average price for the last 50 days, you can see how it tends to be much closer to, to the current price than the 200-day moving average. The 200-day moving average tends to move quite a bit more slowly. And you can see that the 50-day is on an upswing at following the price of Bitcoin as it's going up. And as long as this continues to go up with a decent amount of velocity or even increases velocity, it will pull this 50-day moving average up and up as it approaches the 200. And once it goes above the 200, once this blue line crosses the orange and actually goes above it, that's when the golden cross has formed. And you can see that we're not too far out. So the only thing that would stop the golden cross is if Bitcoin suddenly had a significant drop in price. And actually, at this moment, if Bitcoin fell below the $8,000 price range, 
it could prevent the golden cross from forming at least for now. So um, it will, I, I have a tendency to think, and, and you can see that based off of, you know, here's, here's when the whole, uh, you know, the big stock market and where everything crashed significantly was back there on May 12th. But ever since then, Bitcoin has had a consistent push in the upward direction. And it's gone all the way from that 5,054 level. I mean, the real bottom here was actually uh, three. Well, the, according to this, it was 4,802. But the the actual bottom bottomed at 3,800. Maybe it's on the next dot. Low, 3,772. And that low was 4,300. So yeah, I guess this is the date that it actually bottomed out, bottomed out on at 3,772. You can see the date right up here in this area. I'm sorry, the, the, the open, the high, the low, and the close pricing is up in this area. So anyway, we're on the verge of seeing another golden cross. A golden cross has a tendency, it takes a while for it to form because it needs some historical pattern. And then typically once you see a golden cross form, it does historically has had a long-term, it's been, it's been a good long-term indicator of a long-term trend. And so Oftentimes, once you see a golden cross, the price tends to go up for a longer period of time. Now, we did see a golden cross back here in February, around February 18th of this year, but because of the sudden drop in price, um, you know, on March 12th, where everything tanked, it it completely broke that pattern, and so there were. There were, I would call them extenuating circumstances, circumstances out of anybody's control that drove the price down and really shattered the golden cross pattern. And so that does not follow the historical patterns, but I think for good reason. I think we can understand that, hey, that was really a unique event. So let's take a look at Twitter. Now, recently, um, the happening is dominating the Bitcoin narrative and investor expectations are extremely positive. There were approximately 2.5 thousand tweets about the happening today. And what was the date on this? So that was on May 5th. So on May 5th, there were approximately 2.5 thousand tweets. And that was just two days ago about the happening. And 65% of those tweets were positive. Tweet volumes on the happening have quintupled over the last two weeks. And so not only are the tweets being positive, but the number of tweets has gone up fourfold. And you can see here by the green bars that for most subjects, when it comes to Bitcoin and them talking about the happening, it's been positive. Talking about mining, it's been positive. Talking about a Bitcoin high, that's been positive, etc. So you can see throughout this chart that the only one where they were not so positive was about selling Bitcoin. The majority of them were saying, hey, no, we're not selling. This is not a good time to sell, yada, yada, whatever it was that they were saying. But their sentiment was not in agreement or not positive towards selling at this point in time. And so that tells us that people's opinions about this are in a good mood, in a positive mood. And when you look at Twitter, I'm sorry, Google Trends, not Twitter, we were just looking at Twitter, Google Trends indicates a similar pattern. So when you look at the term search term buy Bitcoin on Google or Bitcoin happening on Google, you can see buy Bitcoin as blue in the charts below and buy Bitcoin halvening as red in the charts below. You can see that the Bitcoin halvening has gone parabolic as it's, it's just jumping sky high here. Now the Bitcoin buy Bitcoin has increased, but it hasn't quite gone as parabolic as the Bitcoin halvening. So while the Bitcoin halvening, anyway, here are some of the countries, breakdown by countries, and you can see here that a lot of countries have interest in either the happening or purchasing Bitcoin all over the world. In fact, the only areas that really don't have a whole lot of, of 
interest going on are the majority of South America and then uh, some of the other countries in through here. I believe that this is China right in here. And so it's interesting that they aren't showing up on this because in China, um, they may not be using Google to do their searches, but if they're using, we've seen in a previous, like it was about a week or two weeks ago, uh, there's a Chinese app that's their version of Twitter, and B the Bitcoin halvening was the number six most most talked about uh, search term on uh, China's version of Twitter. And so uh, even in China, the Bitcoin halvening is a huge, huge topic. So this chart shows you interest of Bitcoin, uh, buying Bitcoin throughout the world. And this chart is showing you uh, the Bitcoin halving. And so I'll give you links to both of these. Well, I'll give you links to everything I'm showing you today. If you just go to my YouTube channel and you click on this, uh, you're, you're watching this video in the description of the video, you'll find the links to this chart, to this Twitter tweet, and everything else that I share with you in this video. You'll be able to find the links to it. So Bitcoin having facts, past price data may shed light on what's to come. So the Bitcoin halving is only seven days away. According to historical data, the first ever cryptocurrency is tracking its previous cycle's price action perfectly. Here are some interesting facts about Bitcoin's price action just ahead of the past two halvings. Um, so markets are cyclical and history often repeats, doesn't repeat 100%, but it, 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 it has a tendency to repeat. Analysts also often warn that past performance does not guarantee future results. So we want to keep that in mind and we need to be cautious about our, the actions that we take. Um, but when it comes to Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies hard-coded happening, lightning has struck twice thus far. Will the third time be the charm or will a sell-off occur? Or even just flatlining. Flatlining would break everything that we're talking about. Uh, the happening narrative is the most bullish thing going for cri the cryptocurrency market, but these narratives are often used as sell the news events. What they mean by that is buy on the rumor and sell when it's actually news. And so um, they're trying to say that if you're if you're reacting to once this becomes a popular news item, you're acting too late. Historically, with the Bitcoin halvening, that has not been the case. It actually, historically, has always hit an all-time high approximately 18 months after the halvening. So that's what we're actually going to look at. To gain a clearer view on what to expect if history does repeat once again and the Bitcoin halving ends up being the dramatic shift in supply and demand that causes the next bull market. So the first halvening happened back in 2012 and you can see how Bitcoin had hit a new all-time high prior to that first happening and then had dropped down from it and what we're doing is measuring how much the current price one week before the Bitcoin happening and how far what percentage of a drop did it make from that previous all-time high and then the second thing they're measuring is what is the, the difference between the lowest price prior to that uh, halvening, one week before the halvening, and um, how much has it gone up since that low price. And so looking at past data during the first cycle, first cycle meaning the Bitcoin halvening of 2012, at one week away, the halvening, Bitcoin was trading at 63% down from the previous all-time high. And so the, the all-time high was here and it was a 63% drop down to the price one week prior to the halvening. And so we're going to compare that to where we are today. Now, on the flip side, it was also 485% up from the local bottom. And so here we saw the local bottom and the price going up. And so this distance from this bottom to this price one week before the happening, the happening is these dotted lines. I, I kind of assume that you would know that, but I should say it out loud. The happening is these, these dotted red lines, and you can see just a small space before it, which is one week. 
um, the price had gone up a total of 485% from that previous low. So let's look at the halvening that happened in 2017. I'm sorry, 2016 is when this halvening actually happened. And then the all-time high where it hit $20,000 happens 18 months after this red dotted line. So down in here somewhere, uh, we would see it hitting that $20,000 price range. And so based off of that, its previous all-time high just before the 2016 halvening and then the low, we see that this time around, Bitcoin is trading, uh, whoops, I need these numbers. The second cycle, one week out, Bitcoin trade was trading 45% below the previous all-time high, and it was up by 300% from the bottom, all right? So this happening, the second time, this time around, Bitcoin is trading at the exact average between the two previous tops. Isn't that interesting? It's exactly the average of the two previous tops to one week out. Right now, Bitcoin is 54% down from the previous all-time high of $20,000. This suggests that Bitcoin is on pace perfectly with the average of the both the past having cycles. Now, the bottom this data from the bottom is slightly different. This could be due to each cycle's diminishing returns. The current bottom on average Bitcoin rose by over 324% from the bottom to the levels trading one week out from the halvening. Right now Bitcoin is only up 189%. So really what this tells me is that the difference, let's go up here, this will make more sense. So the difference between this peak and this bottom was much more dramatic than the difference between today's previous peak of $20,000 and the bottom that we saw back here of $3,800. So it's not quite as a dramatic of a drop down from the previous all-time high. Now, what does that mean? Maybe it means that Bitcoin is gaining a little bit more stability as it goes on, but it just didn't drop nearly as much as it did in the first two halvenings. So the difference between uh, this all-time high and this low was much more dramatic, and this all-time high, so this all-time high was the 2012 halvening, and this all-time high was just before the 2016 halvening. And the difference between here and here was much more dramatic than the current pricing where this was the $20,000 price on December 2017 and this was the low of around 3,800, somewhere around January 2019. And so the differences are less dramatic and that's, that's quite interesting that we are now the same you know, the, the price today is 54% down from the previous all-time high, and that's the exact average of how far it was down from the previous two halvenings. So quite interesting. I think that that's actually quite a good indicator, and it, I like it when it's based on factual information, but I realize that a lot of times it's people's emotions that drive price because sometimes... People don't take action until they're emotionally invested. Um, and so, anyway, that's my news for you today. How can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions that I could answer? Do you have anything you want to talk about? Um, or do you disagree with me? Look, I'm interested in your polite disagreements because you know things I don't know. And I know things you don't know. And when we share what we know together... We're going to grow smarter together. I want to grow smarter together with you, so please share your polite disagreements in the comments below. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And hey, do me a favor and have a fantastic day.